good old water. Remember, I did a review on this R86S box. I put OpenSense on it and I did a really good view on it. I really like this box and they gave me good feedback for that. <clears throat> the problem with this box was it was low on storage. So remember when I said I wanted one that had better specs and SFP plus? Well, since they liked my review in here, I got a new box. Now, before I go too, too far, we have to thank Dustin from Home Network Guy. He's got one of these and he did an awesome review on it, but he did a review using OpenSense and getting the SFP ports working. I, I did take it out of the box. I've been playing with it. Put it back in there, show you guys what you're gonna get out of the box because there's something new, this little box. I put PFSense on it. And just so you guys know, it's fast. It is very, very fast. Installing PFSense, I'm gonna do, I did a little video of how we install it. I'll put it into the video. You guys can scrub through it because it's kind of pointless, but you'll see how fast it is. Out of the box, PFSense, latest version, 2.7, community edition, detects them, the SFP ports, 100%, perfectly. So my box that I had before was just three 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, worked great. The problem with it, like I said, it was low on specs because it was a lower end box. I just wanted to try it. I didn't want to spend too much money and get something and be like, oh, I didn't really need that and the specs were out. But in, in its instance, it worked really well. OpenSense runs really, really well on this box. The box that I had, um, my specs were, it had four or it had four or eight gigs of ram i think on it i think it was eight gigs of ram with 16 gigs of storage and that was really low on storage i mean it worked but if you wanted any logging and stuff like that it was not really that big so the new box i'll tell you the specs and actually i'll show you what it looks like here so you guys have something i'll show you the comparisons to it too there's lots that's changed on the new version and it is very, I think um, Dustin in his video said it was kind of noisy-ish. I mean, it's not silent, but it's not noisy. I had this running beside me and it was, like I couldn't even tell it was sitting there. It's it's quiet. You have to actually put your ear, because there's a fan on the top, you have to put your ear in there to hear it. Um, and I was pretty impressed. So I left it over going three, four days and it wasn't even warm. And I was running traffic through it all day just to test it. This box, the specs on it, is the R86, R86S U4 with a N6005 CPU in it, 32 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage on board. And it's fast. I think it took about a minute and a half to install PFSense 2.7 on there. Very, very easy, right? Boots pretty quick too. This one has and is different than my other vision. And I'm gonna stack them on top because as you're gonna see, you'll notice that we have some SFP plus ports right here on the differences, right? So the new version uses, we'll go off to the side. We're gonna actually go for on the side here. So the new version, as we can tell, has two USB ports, a micro HDMI port. Uh, it does have the small um, micro SD card slot and the normal power button with a light that says that it's on, but it uses a different cable. And I mean, the cable's kind of short. It's only about that long. It works great. You only need it once for installing if you want, but it's actually included. That's good because sometimes you buy these devices and there's no cable that's included. So the cable, pretty simple, in the box when you order the device. We have HDMI, true micro HDMI that plugs into the side and it gives you access to the box. On the back, mine didn't have the Wi-Fi cards in it, right? There's no Wi-Fi antennas on it, right? 
the new one does. The new one also doesn't use the standard barrel jack. If you can see that. Sorry, I have face detection enabled on my camera, so it's always going after my face. All right? So we can see on the side here, it uses a standard barrel jack 12 volts beside the USB port. The new one uses a USB-C cable with beside the USB port. And I tried my standard USB-C that powers my Mac with it. And that's how we installed the OS by just plugging it in. I'm not gonna plug it in now because it's gonna boot and I don't wanna wreck it because I'm gonna probably end up unplugging it. But anyways, it is nice that it just uses a standard USB-C plug and it works. It's also included the new, which one is it? Uh, sorry, I'm getting the boxes mixed up because they look identical. The new one includes a lot of stuff in the box. It comes with the little mini stubby low gain. They're not high gain, they're low gain antennas because they're meant to be close by. Little tiny screw on antennas that come with it, right? And it comes with, when you order these boxes, it comes with, or I'm gonna say, when you order the box, you have to let them know what style of connector you need for the power. I'm in USA, Canada, we use this standard one, right? And it comes with the power supply in the box. Basically, you just take this, whatever style you have. So if you're from the UK, you have a different plug or from China or Japan, whatever, they all have different plugs and stuff like that. Basically, just take it, put it on there. And it just clips on. The power supply goes from zero to 240 volts and it just works. Because switch mode power supplies don't care. As long as they see a certain voltage, they adjust. The cord on this is pretty long, right? What do we got? meter probably about a meter and a bit on there small lightweight works great i used it to install pfsense and i also used the other one to run pfsense for a couple days not a single issue now the reason why i asked them because they reached out and said hey jason your awesome video that we liked uh would you like to try one of these vision uh, versions originally they were just going to send me the new version with the new cpu that didn't have the sip and i said well Excuse me. I'd really like the version with SFP so I can try OpenSense on it. Now, Home Network Guy, Dustin, did a very, very good tutorial getting this working. He did a whole bunch of tests, shows how good it is, and how to enable the SFP Plus ports for OpenSense. But PFSense, not my favorite flavor of OS, but I know it. I installed it, hands down, booted into it, saw all the network ports and worked just great. Of course, it's running BSD 14, the latest version, and it's probably got all the drivers in there for it. So maybe when OpenSense moves to the same BSD level, it'll work too right out of the box. Great little box, works great. I believe there's a screwdriver in these? Hold on a second. I thought there was, maybe there's not. Did I lose it? Nope, it comes with it. Inside the bottom, I believe you could put an M.2 SSD in here, if I'm reading correct. I remember looking at the specs, but I can't remember too many things when I'm trying to remember other things. And yeah, it's got an M.2 slot right there. So if you need more storage, you can. I mean, 128 gigs of storage with 32 gigs of RAM for a firewall, that's pretty good. I mean, how much more do you want? And by the way, there's two fans in here. I could turn it on right now. I'll do, I'm gonna do that actually, just to show you guys how loud it is. It's actually not that loud. I'll put the bottom on it. It's got two little screws and it comes with a little tiny screwdriver. I'll show you how loud it is. Uh, let's put that one in there. I don't like to lose the screws. Okay. I'm gonna do a second video, just so you guys know, um, with more performance reviews and our report, testing and stuff like that, I'm gonna get a hold of Dustin and maybe we'll do a collab of that. I just wanted to let you guys know about the product and how well it works with PFSense first and default everything works. But yeah, so I'm gonna plug it in. Uh, we're gonna steal this cord. With my luck, it's probably wrapped around something on my desk. I move the plug so that way I can plug it in and show you guys. Basically, if we go like this, 
not gonna turn on because default I turned it off. Just so you guys know, maybe a quick tip. If you lose power to this and plug power back into it, it will resume the last state. This one's removing, resuming the last state because I turned it off. So if we push power, okay. You see, can you hear the fan? Hardly anything, right? You really have to put your ear up close to hear the fan. And that, like I said before, it ran for about three, four days under good load, and it wasn't warm at all. It was like quiet. This one does get warm, not like too, too hot, but it does get warm because there's no fan to move air around, right? So the new design, even if I believe the non SFP plus version, so only the half of this version because the bottom part comes off, still has a fan. And if it's that quiet and that efficient, it works great. That's a good idea. I'm gonna wait a minute for I unplug this. Also, so you guys know, I was told that the SFP ports on these are not locked, meaning that they're not fussy for SFP modules. I'm a huge fan of 10 G Tech SFP modules. So I used one of these 10 gig versions into here, which this goes into this port. I'll put a picture of it because I had it running on my desk into the video here for you guys to see. And it worked great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to jump into a quick install video. And then after that, I will um, end the video. But I just wanted to let you guys know, good little device for people who wanna run PFSense on something that's not large, heat hungry, making a lot of heat, or heat generator making a lot of heat, and something that they can just tuck away somewhere. Good little device, okay? So let's jump into the install and then go from there.
Okay, as you can see, easy, easy install, works great. I'll put a couple pictures in here in a second to show you that it's up and running. I did get full gigabit through it because that's as fast as my ISP allow me through it. I would be doing a second video on iPerf and going through the actual box for doing some more testing and stuff like that, but that's a second video. This video is just to show you that video, it works great with PFSense running out of the box, all updated and ready to go, and uh, from there on. So if you have any questions about this video and you want me to do some testing on what certain tests you want me to do on it the next video, leave me a note down below in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. So you guys have a great day. See you later.